and being afraid of public speaking because we think that people are going to judge us. Years ago, I didn't even realize I was afraid of public speaking. My boss asked me to do a presentation in Washington. I flew up to Washington, walked in to present to the IRS, the FBI, the Internal Revenue, and I thought if I just graduated from graduate school and I worked for a physician, I know how to do public speaking. Well, I'm sure all of you think that you're very well qualified to do public speaking when you have those credentials, right? Well, guess what happened? The woman introduced me. I got up in front of 300 people. I stood at the podium. I looked at the audience. And what do you think happened? <laughs> My brain kept saying, Kate, hey, talk. Hey, say something. Open your mouth. And I thought, I opened my mouth. And I looked around, and I thought, you have to say a word. You have to say something. And it wasn't until I could feel the tears of my eyes rolling down my cheek that I realized I had no ability to get any words out of my mouth. And I was scared. And the woman came up to me and said, should we reschedule this when Dr. Taylor's in town? Great idea. I cried all the way back to the airport, cried all the way home. And the next day, my boss, who's a physician, calls from Denmark and says, it's OK, how was the presentation? Mm. And I said, Mark, I don't know how to do a presentation. And he said, so what are you going to do about it? And I said, I'm young, stupid. And I said, I don't know, but when you, by the time you come back from Denmark, I'll know. Mm. So I Googled public speaking, and I found out about Toastmasters. Toastmasters is an international organization that's been around for 50 years. It's in 150 countries. There's about 150,000 members. I'm part of the Toastmasters that meets at King Universities every Wednesday, right behind Costco. This is called Let's Talk Franklin. You're always invited. No pressure to join. You can come for free as many times as you want. And I guarantee you, for all of you who raise your hand, and I remember who you are, <laughs> if you come as a guest for as many times as you want, our meeting or any other meeting, you will get over your fear of public speaking. It's only about $50 every six months to join, and a $20 initiation fee, and you get a manual. And in this manual is a whole bunch of exercises. The first exercise is called icebreaker. So for four minutes, you get up and you tell the audience a little bit about yourself. And then you move on to various exercises. You learn how to use the power of your voice. You learn how to use the power of a pause. You learn how to be silent. Most of us can't handle silence in a conversation. And if any of you are in sales, which I think you all are, it's really important to get to the point where you ask somebody a question and you're completely comfortable with silence. Because that silence encourages that person to speak. So there's a bunch of different exercises in Toastmasters. And I perfected most of them. I thought I was very professional. I made sure that I understood topics. I made sure that I understood all my content. And for the last 15 to 20 years, I've been speaking at different events across the country. And it was really and only until about the last year that I really realized what the hook was when you're doing public speaking. It's not always about all the stuff you know in your head. You know, I always thought, oh, if I sound like I'm really intelligent, people will be really impressed with me. They'll think, oh, wow. I always thought if I had the right suit on and the right briefcase and dress right, and sounding right, everybody would think, oh, wow. But what I realized years ago, and I want to see how many of you have heard of this, nobody remembers data, and nobody remembers facts. But what's the one thing people always remember? Stories. How you make them feel, and stories. So what that means is you got to stop talking from here, and you got to stop talk start talking from here. And you think it's scary to talk in front of public when you're talking from here. Think about talking from here. Think about talking from your heart. Think about sharing something about you. I'm going to give you an example of a great story of somebody who, who shared their heart. But before I do that, the important things that I've learned the last few years 
slides. When you do a presentation, what's the first thing that you should know about? You're talking. Speaking. More important than what you're speaking about is who you're talking to, right? If you're talking to millennials versus baby boomers versus seniors, you better curtail that speech. Because there's some things in there the baby boomers won't even know what you're talking about. And there's some things you would say to baby boomers that the seniors have no idea what you're talking about. So understand your audience. And I never knew that years ago. I just thought, well, if I was really intelligent, everybody would appreciate it. But understand who your audience is. Get a really good feel of your audience. The other thing is interact with your audience. When you're talking, as I'm trying to do, walk around, engage. Don't stay up there and not engage with people down here. The other thing is that connect with everybody. Toastmasters teach you look at somebody when they, you have eye contact, wait for a few seconds and go to somebody else. Why is that important? Anybody know? Silence, see silence. <laughs> what is it? Right. Everybody, no matter how old you are, you want to feel part of something. And if somebody's speaking and they look at you, what does that mean? There. You're there, right? You're there. So know who your audience is, engage with your audience, breathe so you're calming yourself down, and then speak from the heart. So about six months ago, we had a physician from Haiti come to our group. And she wanted to perfect her English before she applied for a job downtown. And she said, I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what to talk about. I want to sound intelligent, but I don't know what to talk about. And I said, why don't you tell us a story? Tell us a story about your kids. And initially, everybody in the group was like, she's a physician. She should be able to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. But I encouraged her to talk about her kids, or to talk about her family. <coughs> so she started telling us the story. Her, her and her husband are both physicians. The day of the big earthquake, they had just picked up their two little seven and nine-year-old kids from school. The city was in ruins. There were massive cries for hospitals for physicians. They had to decide, did they get to the airport with their kids and get on a plane to see relatives in Florida? Or did they stay and treat the injured? Can you imagine parents wondering what to do? The next day they got to the airport and they made the decision that they were putting their seven-year-old and their nine-year-old on a plane to visit relatives in Florida while they were going to stay and take care of the injured. And she looked at the audience and said, and I'm a mom with three kids. She said, I had to decide between my job of saving people and my kids. And the second they put those kids on the plane, what happened? They had a huge aftershock. And she turned around and looked at all of us and said, it was the first day of my life that I realized I may never see our kids again. And everybody in the audience was so captivated with, by her story because she did what? She spoke from her heart. So when you're all, you're all in sales, right? That's why you're all here. You're all here. <laughs> so if you ever wonder how to connect with someone, come to a Toastmasters, whatever you want. But know who you're speaking to. Make sure you look at them. Make sure you say hi. Because everybody's nervous initially when you walk in someplace. Everybody's kind of like, oh, I don't know if they're going to like you. And, this, and the other thing is smile. Can you imagine if I just stood up here like this and I was in the front like this? And then I talked like this. What would you think? Your mannerism has so much more to do with what people think of you. It's not necessarily what you say. It's not your content. But it's how you make somebody feel. So in closing, I'm going to watch the time on my phone. In closing, I would encourage you to know your audience, look at them, smile, make sure that they feel connected, and tell a story from your heart. In the last year, I've been trying to do that, share stories from my heart, and it's hard to be vulnerable. It's hard to admit that you're not perfect. And there's been times on stage, even last week, where I show, shared a story about how my kids struggled in school, how they have learning, two of them have learning disabilities, and the angst I felt. And there were five other people speaking that day, and you know what somebody came up to me and said? Congratulations, you won. I said, why? 
and because they, you shared about how vulnerable you are. We all want to hear that other people are human. We don't want to hear that we're all perfect and know everything. So I'm closing. Our Toastmasters group meets every Wednesday. Let's talk for you. I'm right behind Costco. You're welcome to come for free if they tend to join. And I promise you, for those of you who raise your hands, if next time I ask this in six months or so, you won't raise your hand if you come to our Toastmasters meeting. Thank you.